Hello everyone, and welcome to the Iron Giant Strength Podcast. I am your host, Paul Sterrett. This show is for coaches and people like yourself that want to hear from influencers in our industry. If you're an aspiring strength coach or a coach looking to pick up a few extra tools for your toolbox, this will be the podcast for you. Here we will talk to industry leaders from the professional, collegiate, high school, and private sector settings. You will experience roundtable discussions, co-hosts, as well as guest hosts. Everyone will share their experiences, knowledge, and challenges over various topics in the strength and conditioning world. If you want to talk shop or learn more about what we are up to in between episodes, follow the Iron Giant Strength Podcast on Twitter at Strength Giants. everybody. Welcome back to the Iron Giants Strength Podcast as we continue our conversation talking with coaches around the country about their transition from the summer program into the uh, school uh, season or school semester, fall semester. Uh, happy today to have Coach Jeff Brule from uh, Burke Burnett High School in Burke Burnett, Texas join us. Coach, how you doing, man? I appreciate you joining. Hey, doing well. Uh, thanks for having me, Paul. I, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about our program. Yeah, you know, I, I was looking forward to having you on because you're not even a full year in there at Burke Burnett. You were asked to come down and basically start up a strength and conditioning program from scratch there at the school. So I'm, I'm, in, I'm anxious to talk to you and uh, find out what you've done, uh, maybe some lessons you've learned thus far uh, to help continue to grow uh, your program uh, going in the right direction. So let's start off right away. Summer program. How did that go? How was it structured? Um, what are some things that you guys did, uh, with, with your summer program, with your athletes? So, uh, I guess with the way it was structured, you know, we had, we had multiple sessions just like anybody else would have. We had a, a football only session right away in the morning, uh, followed by a high school girls only session, uh, a middle school, all middle school athletes in one other session. Um, and then a baseball, basketball and soccer session. Uh, those kids that are not involved in in uh, in football, uh, you know, in, in, in the earlier sessions. Um, so that's kind of the way we divided them out. And we always would start, it kind of waterfalled in, you know, we'd have all of our athletes start on the turf with some uh, movement, you know, warm up movement drills, speed stuff, agility, change of direction, excel, decel days and things like that. And then we would transition into the weight room. Um, and and, uh, you know, during the spring while I was here, I kind of got the idea that maybe, you know, the attendance and the, the, the not understanding the importance of the weight room and what it can do for them. And so I, I really kind of structured my 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 training throughout the throughout the summer as, OK, every every day we're going to get some type of an explosive push, pull, hinge, squat. Every day we're going to do some type of variation of that. The The focus may be different from one day to the other, but every single day those kids are going to get something like that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the difficulty level was was a little bit different from the the football guys because I had trained with them a little bit more during the during the spring uh, than it was from the high school, uh, high school girls session. Um, and then the middle school kids, it was really all about building those foundational movements within, you know, our, our beat. You know, it really wasn't so much about what the kids didn't know. It was about what they thought they knew <laughs> oh, yeah. and having to untrain some of those things. Yeah. Um, so that so there was a lot of, you know, there's a lot of really, really wide base squats and, and setting up on your bench press way wrong and, and, and our no presence of a hinge whatsoever in some of our athletes uh, cleans and stuff. So it, those things to kind of fix, um, that they thought they were doing really well, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so far that summer program was a good stepping stone into, into what we need to do this fall. This, this school year. Sure. A couple of things that, that you mentioned, I think it's great. You guys have a high school, I'm sorry, middle school program um, that you have something structured for your middle school kids. You know, that just, you know, gets, it helps you out that much more when they enter high school, you know, as freshmen. Um, so I think that's great. How are you able to, was that something that was already in place? Was that something you put in place? So that that is that's something that they, they had done in the summer uh, previously. They yeah. they had had that. There wasn't as much variation in what they were doing. Um, 
but what's nice about the way they've let me structure this program here is it's uh, throughout the throughout the year it's a comprehensive program so it's it's six through 12 that sixth graders have what they call pre-athletics here in texas um so i'm able to work with them twice a week on it, it may be you know gpp body weight movements to start with and then we kind of work into more difficult movements um and then they'll end up getting to into the weight room after you know eight to ten weeks uh, they'll get into the weight room um so that's going to be that that was a great that was a, this this just get me getting here in the spring that was a great you know, kind of a boost for those kids getting into seventh and eighth grade years. Um, but then, you know, we'll we'll do the same thing at they have athletic periods for seventh and eighth grade kids um, for guys and gals. And, you know, we'll do the same thing for the it's, it's a strength program for for them during the, uh, their athletic periods. And we're able to kind of, I guess, build that foundation from bottom to the top as they get up here to high school so that's what's that's what's really nice about this and i'll even be able to get into the elementary schools and, and uh, get a couple movements in there with them as well yeah that's great so uh structure was you said you did with the summer stuff you did some field stuff first and then yep. and then you went into the weight room right how much time did you have with them about 45 minutes on the field <laughs> and then we get about a five to eight minute transition into the weight room, let them change into, into flats and stuff. And then yeah, uh, 40, about 45 minutes in the weight room as well. Okay. And talk about attendance. How, how, how was that? Were you happy with it? Um, Cause I know it's not, you know, it's hard to make stuff mandatory. Uh, yeah. how, how, how were you uh, with the overall attendance? It, you know, yeah, it's not mandatory. Um, and, you know, in, in other schools where, that I've been where the program's been established and everybody kind of understands the goals and what we're, what we're kind of going after. Um, I, I was a little disappointed because um, that, that actualization of what that training can do for you and your, your specific sport just, it's just not registering all the way yet. I thought, yeah. I don't think with some athletes. So we had a, we had a good solid group of maybe I'd say maybe 25 to 30% of the kids that showed up that understood and, and were here you know, 80% or more of the time. Um, then, then that other, that other uh, population, I mean, you may have one group of kids one day and a completely different group of kids the other day. You may still have 60, 70 kids, but it's a different 60 or 70 kids. That, yeah. and, that, and I think, and I think with the, the way that, that we did the, you know, every, every day, there's every type of movement you could do. I think that kind of helped a little bit. Um, but they definitely missed out on some things uh, that, that we need to that we need to address as well. Sure. Before we jump into you know the fall semester and that transition, talk about are there things that you learned? You know, again, it you haven't even been there a full year yet, but are there are there things that you learned with the attendance that you might try to um, do next year just to make maybe the buy in or or the attendance better? Yeah, I think that's I think I think it really comes more from from the head because all the head coaches kind of run their their athletic periods and stuff yeah. so I think it really kind of works from the top down with them and making sure they're on board on on you know reiterating you know I was pretty clear with what the expectations were and what we're trying to do as a, as a sports performance program here at the start when I came um, but there needs to be that reassurance that hey we're not we're not out here to you know in season and off season training is going to be completely different for you we're not here to hurt your kids in any way. My, my goal is to hand you over the best possible individual yeah. athlete that that person can be. And then you just go to work with them. Like you don't, you don't have to worry about their conditioning level. You don't have to do anything. So your practices should be better because you're able to focus more on that and, and not all this other stuff. Yeah. Um, so talk about, yeah, talk about to cut you off, Jeff, but talk about the importance of that communication with, with, you know, with you and all of the sport coaches. Yeah. So, I mean, I met when I first got down here, you know, starting a new program and stuff. I fir first of all, I met face to face with everybody. And then that's constant communication via email or text or calls or something like that. Um, and making sure that they, like I said, making sure they understand what it is we're trying to do and understanding the, the big thing was getting them to understand that what they were doing is not necessarily what it is we're going to do moving forward. Um, sure. Cause you know, uh, the, the girls off season program came in here and they, they did, they did a bench squat deadlift and clean all in one session at 70 to 80, 75 to 85%, you know, and they did that every other day, almost, you know, type of thing. And then that, that was it. There was no, you know, 
unilateral movements or or th th there really wasn't a whole lot of variation in that and and getting them to understand that it's not going to look the way that it has in the past sure. uh, has been the most difficult part um yeah but as they i think the summer was really good for that because you know those coaches came and they helped work and they saw and they understood and uh, at the end of the school year, I was actually given a day where I could uh, do a professional development day for those for those coaches. So that That's that great. helped out great. That's great. Um, yeah. And we have a uh, what I set up a Google Drive, a uh, shared Google Drive folder with it, it's got every every sports, every sports daily training plan is in there. They're, they're ranked with core published stuff. If we're doing flying tens, verticals or starting tens, um, all of their their data from, you know, start of the session to the end of the session um oh the their exercise database is in there they can go in there hey i don't know what this is because you know the sport coaches are going to help run quite a few of these sessions i don't know what this exercise is i go look it up it's got a video for me um and then I, it's got tons of stuff in there our character That's education right. program and all that kind of stuff good stuff well let's jump into uh the the fall semester how is that going to be structured okay first and foremost um, how are you going to see your athletes, whether it's before school, after school, are they implemented into a strength class throughout the school day? And then just, let's just talk about that transition. You know, what's going to be different from what you've been doing in the summer to that fall semester. Um, that's, that's coming upon us pretty quickly here. Yeah. So, I mean, that, I mean, this is going to be a little bit of change for me too, because, you know, I, I was up in Kansas and, and all strength and conditioning is, you know, it may be before after the school day, but you have classes and stuff, and it, you may have some kids in one sport first hour. You may have some fifth hour, you know. Yeah. Um, but what's nice here is it's almost it's almost kind of like a college schedule with those athletic periods that they have. Um, so as we transition from summer to the fall, some of those some of those teams are going to go right into an in season program, um, which you know I sent out an email the other day. Hey. All in-season teams are required to, to meet two to three times a week. Uh, all off-season teams are required to meet three to five times a week. Um, and and those those sessions are going to look, you know, fairly different. Sure. Uh, so there's going to be, yeah, there's going to be teams that kind of schedule when they want to lift and, and when, where they fit based on their competitions and stuff as well. Um, so you will have, we'll have people going at 630 before school, uh, most most athletic periods are either at the beginning of the day or the end of the day. Um, so there'll be tons of different teams lifting and, and practicing during those times. Um, then well, we actually got transitioned into a freshman only uh, athletic period uh, this year, which is which is going to be a change. It's going to be nice. So all those freshman athletes will be divided into two classes right in the middle of the day. So they'll have a lot of one on one attention there. Um, that's good. So it's, it's going to be different for me too because I'm not yeah. used to the whole athletic period thing. So it's 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 set up really nice to do what you need to do with the athletes that you have, yeah. um, especially for those in season teams. Um, you can structure things and in, in such a way that are beneficial to them. Um, but but yeah, and then and then to to your to your question about the how are we transitioning kids that haven't been here all season. So it depends on really how many kids I'm going to have that that aren't that weren't here. Um, so like in, in football, uh, <coughs> we may have we may have 20 kids that didn't show up at all during the summer. They may be in just similar to what I did back in Dodge City. Hey, there's going to be an A group workout and there's going to be a B group workout. Yeah. Those movements are going to be same, but the difficult difficulty level or is going to be a little bit different. Sure. Um, and then really just trying to push them along as fast as we can to get them to mesh in with the other group. Some groups are just going to have a few kids and, you know, we may just partner them up with athletes that have been there the whole season yeah. or the whole, the whole summer season and get them to kind of work into it as fast, as fast as they can. Yeah. I think that's important for coaches to know. I mean, that's kind of the, you know, I, I've, I've heard that from other coaches that I've talked to about this topic is, you know, the, the movement, the movement's going to be the same. The meat and potatoes of the workout can be the same. Now, how I load it, you know, from yep. individual to individual, that's where I that's where I might maneuver things around a little bit. But as far as the meat and potatoes of the program, it's gonna it's gonna stay the same. The load might be different. The volume might be different too, as well. But uh, 
you know, and then I, you know, you made a good point too. you know, maybe teaming up a kid that hasn't been there with a couple kids that have been there or leaders, whatever, upperclassmen, whatever, to kind of help, you know, bring them along too, as well, I think is another nice way for coaches to structure that or, or work around that, you know, uh, if you have some athletes that just haven't been there uh, throughout the summer. So as far as the athletic periods down there, so just so we're like, you don't have strength classes throughout the school day, right? You have those freshman classes, but the athletic periods take place before school and after school. Am I right with that? Uh, well, they're also like the first hour of the day. Yeah, the first hour of the day. Okay. Or, or the, or the last hour of the day. And then you see, you see the whole team. So it's like, okay, yep. this is, oh, that's great. Okay. It, yeah. It's, it's wonderful. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's one, I'm, I'm sure it's a scheduling nightmare for, for the counselors, but it is, <laughs> It is wonderful for, for training kids. It definitely is. Oh, that's great, man. That's great. Well, Coach, talk about lastly, I guess, what's something with your program that you're hoping to instill um, that you feel might be unique or might help separate your program from, you know, the, the school down the road from you? Well, you know, we kind of, we started this this we started dabbling in a little bit this summer is that character uh, education piece and also like our health and wellness type piece. Um, so basically, it's gonna be it's gonna be like lessons that you know three to five minutes at the beginning of the session, especially at the middle school, they're gonna hammer this pretty hard. Where uh, our our character lessons will basically coincide with our core values of our athletic department or a specific team if we're working individual teams. Um, so they'll get a little snippet of, hey, this is so it may be on responsibility and this is what it is. This is why it's important. And this is our quote of the day. And then we'll actually go in. It's a two week cycle where you'll you'll hit that that uh, character piece as well as the next week you'll go into some type. Of, it, it could be it could be based on some information on hydration or sleep or, you know, the, the effects of screen time. Um, it, it, it could be a variety of different things that we'll hit on um, outside of necessarily <coughs> training, but, you know, th those things that affect us as, as athletes. So um, I'm hoping that's going to be a great just learning experience for them as well um, to understand that it's not just about what we're doing in the weight room. It's yeah. all about a lot of other factors as well that, that play into it. Um, you, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that's, that's kind of a little bit of a difference maker for us, but uh, sure. uh, aside from that, just, you know, we've got and, – and, and I'm sure that other schools in Texas are like this too, but it's just – it's it's been pretty awesome to get all the sport coaches. Um, the sport coaches are really kind of all on board with this, and and, and they are – they are basically – because I can't get to every team, you know. There's a whole bunch of teams going at once, so I can't get to every team, so they kind of lead sessions as well. So being able to to have them to kind of fall back on and, and, and them knowing what it is they're doing, it's it's – I, I've got a great, uh, a really a great staff right here that's, that's willing to help me out with that. So I feel pretty blessed about that. Yeah, that's great, man. That's great. Coach, I know you're busy. I appreciate the time very much, man. I know you guys are getting ready to rock and roll down there in Texas. So I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to, to talk to us a little bit and provide us with some good nuggets, man. Heck, anything for Coach Paul. I learned most of what I know from you, man. Well, that, that might be debatable, but <laughs> hey, buddy, much appreciated. All right. And uh, we'll look forward to following up with you. I think it's real interesting. Like, like I said at the beginning of this, you know, the unique situation that you're in at being asked to come down there, start up a program from scratch. I think it's a lot, a lot more goes into it than what we might even realize, you know, so we'll be anxious to follow up with you just to see how things are progressing. Uh, with, with Man, it, 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 it's funny you say that because <laughs> I was talking with a coach just the other day. I was like, you know, we're nowhere near where we want to be. And you kind of have to keep your mind focused on, hey, we may not be where <laughs> the end, end result, but, you know, we're taking steps in the right direction. It's going to be one little victory at a time. And and uh, hopefully it kind of snowballs and kids get it and, and we get there faster. That's kind of the goal. Absolutely, man. Well, we'll look forward to following up with you just to see, see how things have been going, man. So, but buddy, thanks again, much appreciated. Um, everybody, thanks for joining us today. Um, stay tuned for the next episode of the Iron Giant Strength Podcast.